Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to redo one of the videos that I have done before, which is to find the area of the region bounded by the two given curves. One of them is a straight line and the other one is a parabola. Okay. And the reason for why I'm doing this is really because uh, one of the subscribers actually asked me to redo this problem in a different way. And in the other video that I was doing, I actually set up an integral to find the area in terms of y. And this time I actually want to set up an integral. Actually, it will be more than one integral to find the area in terms of x. Okay, so let's actually get started. And so the idea is this, if we want to find the area and we want to set up an integral in terms of x, then what happens is that we actually use the top curve minus the bottom curve. So um, when we look at this region right here, we actually have a region that has like a top curve, but then you can see that there are two different bottom curves right here. One of them is this one. So as you can see that this one is one of the bottom curves. And what about the other one? The other one is for this part right here. They are actually different. So we actually need to set up two integrals. It's really because we need to split this region into two. So this is how we are going to do it. We are going to break up the region right here which is at x equals 1, 2, 3, 4. And so we are going to split up the region like this. And as you can see where the dashed line segment that I'm drawing here, right here. And then now this is our first region. So we can actually, um, let me just shade this region right here. So this is our first region that we want to find the area of. I can label as A sub 1, okay? And then the other region, the other region is the this region right here, so I can label that as A sub 2, okay? So what happens is that we set up an integral for A1, and then we set up another integral for A2, and then we add them together, then we get the area of the uh, this region, okay? So let's get started. So what happens is that we are going to first set up the integral for A1, and then so a1, okay, is equal to what? Well, let's see. So now what happens is that we just look at this region and when we write down the integral, we need the limits for the x, right? And then the lower limit, which is actually the leftmost point for this region right here, which is when x is equal to 1, okay? As you can see, actually labeling the scale would make it easier for us to read. So I'm going to label as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, right? So that's all we need here. Okay, so now what happens is that the leftmost point for this is just 1. So we are going to put the 1 here for the lower limit. And then what about the upper limit? The upper limit is the rightmost point, and then actually there are a lot of points right here, and it's at x equals 4 for this region. So our upper limit will just be the 4. Okay, and then the next step is to find the area, right? And then what happens is that, well, actually, um, we need to find the length for the rectangle, assuming that we're using the rectangle to do the approximation. And so that's actually using the top curve minus the bottom curve. And so when it comes to using the top curve minus the bottom curve, if we look at that, look at this top curve right here, which is this one. But then the problem is that we get to use uh, the expression in terms of x. And it should be y of the top curve. And then here it says y squared. So that's a problem because we don't really have the function with that is in the form of uh, y equals some function of x. It's actually y squared equals 5 minus x, right? So how do we solve a y here? We can actually square root both sides of this equation. So we can simply, let's just do it here. So what happens is that if we have y squared equals 5 minus x, we can simply just square root both sides. And so it's going to look like y squared with 5 minus x and then take the square root on both sides. And then so what happens that it would, it's just going to look like this with a plus or minus. Okay. And then what happens is that we are going to just get what y is equal to this plus or minus the square root of 5 minus x. Okay. So now what happens is that you may say, which one should we pick? So we always pick the plus or so we also pick the minus or so we always pick the minus what should we do well actually you can think of this 
parabola as two pieces. The top piece right here, that is above the x-axis. This is where the vertex is, right? So if you just look at the top piece, that actually gives you the uh, the positive square root of phi minus x. And then what about the bottom piece? The bottom piece below the x-axis, that is the piece that is uh, given by the negative square root of phi minus x. So now because we are using the top curve right here, so we are going to use the positive square root of phi minus x as our top curve. And so that means we are going to have the square root, positive square root, phi minus x. Okay, and then that's our top curve. And then minus, okay, so we put the minus right here. And then the bottom curve, bottom curve is actually our line, right? So we just use the line right here. And why it's already isolated, so the expression that we use would be 3 minus x. So we get the, the 3 minus x right here. And then so now we have the integral set up for a1. And then the rest becomes just integration work, right? So now let's actually do the integration. And so we can actually simplify the integrand first before we do the integration. So we can actually rewrite the uh, the square root as phi minus, phi minus x to the one half and then minus three and then plus x. Okay, so now we can start integrating. Since we have a linear expression inside the square root, we actually don't even need to do a use up. We can just simply reverse the chain rule easily, right? So we can actually just do, well, let's integrate. So we have phi minus x, okay, and then three over two. And then as you can see that we are actually just reversing power rule here. And then we need to multiply by the reciprocal of this new power, which is two over three. But then there is one thing that is important to remember is that because the coefficient of the of the x is negative one. And so we still need to negate this two over three right here. I mean, actually negate this whole expression right here. It's really because when you differentiate, um, we need to take the derivative of the inside that will give us negative one and we want to cancel that negative one out. So that's why we need to put an extra minus sign right here and then continue with the other stuff. So minus 3x, so the other stuff are straightforward. So minus 3x and then plus one over two x squared. Okay, and then we just have this expression right here. This is our antiderivative. And so we can actually evaluate it from one to four. And as you can see here, it's really just using the fundamental theorem and calculus, plugging in the four, plugging in the one, and then subtract those two expressions. So we are going to get negative two over three and then five minus four, three over two minus three times four plus one over two and then four square. And then minus now the same thing, right? So, except that this time we plug in the one in there. So that's all that substitution work. And then now doing the calculation, this is really just one. So we get negative two over three. So we are going to get negative two over three and minus 12 plus, what is that? This is what, 16 divided by two. So we get eight. And then this one, it's what? This is minus minus. So we're going to get a plus. We get a plus here. And then two over three is just two over three. Okay, and then now let's worry about this thing. This is phi minus one, which is four. And then there is the two in the uh, denominator for this exponent. So we are taking the square root. So we get the square root of four, which is two. Two to the third power is eight. So we are actually going to get eight. Yeah, so we can actually think of this one as what? Four with the square root and then to the third power. So as you can see here, so that's two, two to the third is eight, eight times two is 16. So we get 16 over three. So 16 over three. And then minus, minus, we'll get plus three. And then this one is one half, so minus one half, so like the one half. And then we have all those numbers. And then now what happens is that we can uh, just combine the numbers that are uh, having the same denominator and then also combine the integers. Okay, so what happens? 
is that we are going to get, what is that? 16 over three minus two over three is going to be 14 over three. And then, uh, what is this? This one, negative 12 plus eight is negative four. Negative four plus three is negative one. So we get negative one and then minus one over two. And we can actually put those two together. So negative one, negative 0.5, negative 1.5. Yeah, so we have, 14 over 3 and then minus 1.5. Well, actually, if you want, you can also put it as a fraction. So it would be 3 over 2. Now you may say, so we just do the computation right here by getting the common denominator. Uh, we can wait a little bit. It's really because later on, if we find, when we find the area for this A2 right here and it has, uh, um, some numbers in here, uh, that would have, a uh, the same denominator as this 14 over three, then we can actually just put them together without having to worry about doing this calculation. So right now we can just leave the answer like this for now. Okay. So now moving on to A2. So for the A2, then what happens is that we are going to, well, let's just set up the A2 right here. Okay. So how do we do the A2? A2 first. Look at, let's look at the limits. Regarding the limits, it's actually going from four to five, as you can see here. So we'll just, just put four to five right here for the limits. So that part is really straightforward. Now let's look at the top curve and the bottom curve. The top curve is actually coming from the positive square root of five minus X. And then what about the bottom curve? The bottom curve is actually what the negative square root of five minus X. You see what's going on here? Um, I can actually just show that right here. So as you can see that this, if you just look at this region, this is the vertex. Okay, so this is the region. This is just that region for the A2. And so as you can see here, this one is the Y equals square root of phi minus X. That is for, that is for this part. And then for the other part, for the other part, <clears throat> this is what, this is y equals negative square root of phi minus x, as you can see here. So now if you want to use the top curve minus the bottom curve, then it would actually be the square root of phi minus x minus negative square root of phi minus x. Yeah, so that's what we are doing right here. So right now it would be square root of phi minus x. That's our top curve. Okay. And then minus, and then the bottom curve would be negative square root of phi minus X. Yeah. And as you can see that we are not going to be getting zero. It's really because the, um, when we do the subtraction on a negative quantity, then we are going to get what we are going to get a, a we are, we're getting at addition right here. Right. So yeah. <clears throat> and we are actually just doubling this. So what happens is that we are going to get the integral from four to five, and then we have two times the square root of phi minus x, and then dx. And then just continuing from here, so we are going to just get two, and then as you we have seen the uh, the antiderivative for the square root of phi minus x here already, which is this thing. So we can just simply just copy that. Okay, so we have negative two over three, and then phi minus x. Yeah, I, I do have a four right here, but then that's substituting the four, right? Actually, the original antiderivative is four minus, uh, phi minus x right here, as you can see. Yeah, so here we have phi minus x, and then three over two. Evaluated from four to five. So now continue with the substitution. We are going to be getting negative four over three, okay? And then phi minus x to the three over two and then from four to five. And so we have what? We have plugging in the five, we are actually going to get zero, so don't even bother, right? So this is zero. Putting the four, we're going to get one. So we are actually subtracting negative four over three. So we can see that it will be negative four over three, which is really just four over three as 
the answer for the A2. So now we already figure out the A1, and then we also figure out the A2. As you can see, A1 is right here, A2 is here, and then right now we can um, we can write down the area, the region. So the area, the total is actually given by what? A1, and then plus A2. Then so what do we get here? A1 is the 14 over 3 minus 3 over 2. So we have 14 over 3 and then minus 3 over 2 and then plus and then 4 over 3, right? So we have 4 over 3. And then and as I said before, you can you can actually get a number. It's really possible that you can get a number that is what that is having the same denominator as this 14 over 3 so that we can actually just add them right now, which will give us 18 over 3. And then minus 3 over 2. So we're going to get 6 minus 3 over 2. And to avoid worrying about the common denominator, we can simply just convert it to a decimal. So 6 minus 1.5, which will give us 4.5. If you want a fraction answer, then it will be 9 over 2 because we know that 4.5 is 9 divided by 2. So that's our final answer. Okay, as you can see here, um, if you just watch the other video, I actually include the link in the description below. And you can see that for if you set up the area, I mean, you set up the integral for the area for this region here in terms of y, you only need one integral. But if you set it up in terms of x, you actually need to set up two integrals and you need to calculate each one and then add them together. So, so that's it for this problem. Thank you for watching. Please share this video to others. I will see you next time.